Hey y'all, what's up? I'm Heather, and uh, I'm going to be starting a food vlog today. What I'm going to be doing is uh, videotaping my eating habits for the next five days, and each day is going to have a theme, um, and uh, I'm going to cook according to that theme every day. I'm going to shop, cook, and eat according to that theme every single day. Uh, today's theme is international. I'm going to be doing an ultimate chicken stir fry. And uh, we're about to head off to the grocery store now. So uh, enjoy. All right, here we are in Trader Joe's. This is Charlie. And we are looking for cashews, chicken, water chestnuts, chili oil, garlic, ginger, spring onions, and soy sauce and cornstarch. Let's uh, get started. Let's see. Where would the chili oil be? That's where I'm trying to start. Well, there's oils right here. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Um, what do we need? We need sesame oil. Look at that. Sesame oil. Right there. Oh, so many people here. Okay, let's see if this is it's Trader Joe's has me oil. Oh man, it's made in California. Chili pepper sauce? Yeah, but not oil. But no chili oil. It's just gonna be like an extract. Yeah. Um, look at my list again. Hmm. Soy sauce. You need that, right? Yes, I assume. Yes. Sweet chili sauce. Chili pepper sauce. Habanero sauce. Resident unsalted cashews. Too expensive. At least I didn't get those. Alright, now we've found everything on our list except for. Chili oil. Chili oil. And water chestnuts. Let's see, there's a basket. Yay! Okay, so we have purchased all of our ingredients for our stir fry, which is soy sauce, sesame seed oil, uh, chili oil, uh, cornstarch for thickening, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, roasted and unsalted cashews, stir fry oil, water chestnuts, and boneless skinless chicken breast. First of all, Oh, one more thing. Whole green onions. What I'm going to do right now is chop up the onions, garlic, and ginger so I can start making our sauce. So what I'm doing right now is mincing a tablespoon worth of ginger. And I've already got my carrots and my green onions and my cashews and I'm starting the sauce which all that's in there is chili oil okay what we've done so far is we cut the carrots minced the garlic minced the ginger cut the onions got out our water chestnuts 
and we measured out cashews. Charlie is cutting up the chicken. And I'm waiting on the wok to heat up so I can toast the cashews. Then, look at that, the computer. We are going to mix the sauce, which is going to be chili oil, garlic, minced ginger, onions, soy sauce, and water. That's it. We'll be back. First thing I just said was toast the uh, cashews. Now, what I'm going to do is put two tablespoons of sesame oil into the wok and add the chicken and brown it. Next, I'm gonna stir fry the carrots water ch and water chestnuts with the and cooked chicken all together and mix that all together and then add the sauce. Actually, then I'm gonna add cornstarch and water to thicken it all together and then add the sauce. Okay. Tablespoons of peanut oil. We're using sesame seed oil because I read the recipe wrong. I mean, it's essentially the same thing. You did? chicken go over there yeah remove the chicken and I am sauteing the carrots and water chestnuts you can add mushrooms if you want to but neither of us like mushrooms so we took mushrooms out and we are sauteing these in this wok for about three minutes and then we're gonna add our chicken back in along with the sauce the stir fry sauce and the cashews and then that cooks by itself for about six minutes, and we're done. I mean, have the camera actually. Okay, so we finished our rice, white rice, and we finished our stir fry, and it's being covered so it stays warm while we make pot stickers. We are making pork and leek pot stickers right now. And then we're gonna have some sake, even though that's not Chinese. Whatever. It's international. Yay! And here is our finished product. Stir fry and pot stickers and dumpling sauce. Authentic from Chinese grocery store. Uh, chili sauce. Good stuff. And sake. Yay! Time to eat. Yes, time to eat. Okay, here is dinner number two. Tonight I'm going to be making an authentic Swedish meal since I, my family is from Sweden. And what we're going to be making is Swedish meatballs. Um, I didn't have time to make my own because I would have to have gone out and found uh, veal and lamb and um, all those ground meats and they don't have those at a lot of stores in Athens. So, what I'm doing is I'm making frozen meatballs um, from they're actually from Sweden. Um, the only place that I know of that you can get them at is Ikea. So I'm making the Swedish meatballs from Ikea with their uh, the cream sauce. They have an authentic cream sauce. That is exactly how it's made in Sweden. Um, what you do along with meatballs for Swedish meatballs dinner is uh, mashed red potatoes. So what I'm doing first is I'm boiling my red potatoes to get them nice and soft and I'm going to mash them with the skins on. The skins make it more authentic. Uh, then what I'm going to do is just put the frozen meatballs in, into a saute pan 
and heat them up, get them nice and crispy. The cream sauce, all you do is you add some milk and some water and a little bit of flour to thicken it up and that's it's very very simple and that's about it okay now i am stirring around the meatballs they're almost ready and i'm boiling the water for the cream sauce i've already mashed my potatoes they are done we are also going to have what is supposed to be traditional Swedish lingonberry jam with these potatoes, but I couldn't find lingonberries anywhere in Athens, so I had to get cranberry sauce, which cranberries are very similar to lingonberries. They're just bigger and a little more tart. Lingonberries are tiny and a little sweeter. That's the only difference. So it's basically like Swedish cranberry sauce. Okay, here's our finished project. Product, I mean. Um, we've got our Swedish meatballs, our mashed red potatoes, our beautiful brown cream sauce, and our cranberry sauce. We're also drinking lingonberry tea, also from Sweden. Delicious. Okay, here's our finished product, and here is how we eat it. Take some mashed potatoes, all covered in cream sauce, and a, mar a marshmallow, a meatball that's also covered in cream sauce, and then you dip it in the berries, and mm, it's perfect. That's it for day two. See you next time. I'm not recording. Well, wow. okay. Hey y'all, day three. Uh, heading to the grocery store right now. I'm going to be making an all organic spaghetti tonight. That means organic everything from the noodles to the garlic bread and the salad and the salad dressing. Everything will be organic. So it should be interesting. <laughs> Okay, here we are in the organic section of Kroger, and I've got some organic onions that I'm gonna get. They don't look that great, but I gotta cook with organic. So I'm getting an organic onion. Um, whoop, sorry. Uh, bell pepper. This one looks pretty good. Oh, it's decent. Okay, that looks about it for the organic produce that I need. I think. Okay, looking for organic salad mix. Organic, look at that. Good grief. Um we want Caesar salad? For s I don't see any organic Caesar salad mix. Apparently it doesn't exist. We'll just go with... Or where am I? That's in Caesar salad, right? Sure. Why not? Um, so salad mix. Off to the pasta and tomato sauce. Look, a whole section for natural and organic ground beef. Um, one pound, that's perfect. And it is, huh. Sign says organic. Or is it ground beef? Natural, no preservatives. Always vegetarian. Here we go. 
organic ground beef. How much is that? Good grief! Same as the one you're gonna grab. No, oh, that's buffalo. Never mind. I looked at the buffalo, it said $8.99 a pound, and I did not want that. Okay, let's go with the organic ground beef. It's one pound. Right, here's our organic tomato paste. 99 cents. Organic tomato sauce. I need two of those. But I don't see any organic tomatoes. Interesting. Hmm. Charlie. Charlie. Need you over here. I'm dropping it. I don't have that much. Okay. What? Excuse me. I'm looking for tomatoes. I don't see any organic tomatoes. Here we go. Organic diced tomatoes. Get two of those, I guess. 14.5 ounces. Does that equal one big can? Sure. Okay, home from the grocery store. We've got organic tomato paste, organic diced tomatoes, organic tomato sauce, organic beef, organic onion, organic bell pepper, organic spaghetti noodles, organic garlic, doesn't say it on there, but you know, it, it is. Organic salad mix, some herbs, and couldn't find organic bread, but I found whole grain, whole grain artisan, you know, no preservatives. If I could get it to focus, it won't focus. Well, anyways, there, no preservatives. Bread. Um, and... For the purpose of this class, this geography of food class, this wine is fair trade certified. So, can you please focus, camera? Here, try this. Oh, there it is. Fair trade certified wine. Economic development for farming communities. Sustainable, sustainable development for our planet's future. That's for you, Professor Page. First step is browning meat, cutting up all the veggies, and that's about it for now. All right, our veggies are all chopped up, so now it's time to add the tomatoes. sauce more tomatoes and the tomato paste which I'm gonna have to scoop out okay scooped now we add all our other veggies Sorry about that. And we warm it up. All right, now all the herbs and meat have been added to our pot. And we're just gonna let it cook for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then I'm gonna pop the bread in the oven and the pasta in the pot. And dinner will be ready. Awesome. Okay, our sauce is almost done. I've started boiling the water for the pasta and prepared the bread with some butter, parsley, basil, oregano, and garlic. And that's going to go in the oven in a minute. And then it will be time to eat. Yay! And here is our organic salad, bread, spaghetti, and fair trade wine. 
and a delicious dinner for the end of day three. I almost said four. I meant three. Day three. Uh, see you tomorrow. Hey y'all, uh, welcome to day four. Today is actually going to be two meals in one day. I'm going to do a lunch, which I'm making right now, and then a dinner later this afternoon. Um, what I'm making for lunch is entire veg entire lunch made of vegetables. So what I'm going to start with is broccolini. It's like baby broccoli hasn't, you know, gotten very big yet. And I'm going to put some olive oil, which I've already done. I put olive oil in my pan with some sea salt. A little bit of sea salt and some minced garlic if I could get this open hang on a second I got it open okay I put about a teaspoon of minced garlic in there it's easier to cook with this kind of garlic uh, and it's my favorite I put garlic in and on everything I'm also making a salad out of this, my stuff I used last night from my organic spaghetti, and a baked potato. It's already in the oven. So that's going to be lunch. I will come back when we're closer to making the broccolini because the potato just went in the oven. Let's check this baked potato. Oh, it is ready to go. I'm going to pop that back in there and start this oil for the broccolini. Let that heat up and then we'll be back. Broccolini is in the pan. Uh, baked potatoes um, is still in the oven keeping warm. I'm gonna also have some salad. And I will make that salad right now. this out of here. It's already pre-washed so I don't have to wash it. Luna, this is my cat trying to eat the lettuce I dropped on the floor. What do you think, Luna? You don't want a salad. This salad. Put that all back in the fridge. a little more. It's good. Oops. Okay, it's time to broccolini's done, potatoes done, salads done, and now I'm going to dress my potato. And my all-time favorite things to put in a baked potato are butter, sour cream, and chives, fresh chives from the garden. They're my favorite. These are from my grandfather's garden in Norcross. He grows them himself and they're delicious. So we let that butter melt a little bit. This is just my lunch, so it's nothing fancy. Dinner's gonna be an interesting, I'm, I'm going to be doing a one pot like rice cooker meal. I'm gonna cook vegetables tuna and rice all in one rice cooker. That's going to be my, my theme for tonight's dinner is a one pot recipe kind of thing. So that'll be interesting. Um, well, that's it for lunch. I'm going to finish dressing this potato. I can't do it one, with one hand. So, um, all right. Yep. Enjoy. And I will see you for dinner. Bye. All right. We are back and ready to start cooking our one rice cooker meal for dinner. I'm gonna do some, where did it go? Brown rice, right here. Some brown rice on the bottom, right here. And then in the top, in the steamer basket, I'm gonna put some ahi tuna fillets and some corn and zucchini. And hopefully it will turn out okay. Okay, so I've got everything we're going to eat for dinner in this nifty little rice cooker. There's our tuna steaks, our corn, our zucchini, and rice is all underneath there. So it is cooking. Nothing really exciting going on right now, but it should take about 10, maybe 20 minutes. 
to cook and we'll see what it, what it tastes like. Here's the final rice cooker meal and everything came out perfectly delicious. What do you think? Oh yeah. What's been your favorite meal that I've done this this week? Swedish meatballs. The Swedish meatballs, of course. Now tell me the di if you noticed a difference between regular spaghetti and the organic spaghetti. Not at all. Yeah. It's just me. No, it wasn't just him. It's just I didn't notice a difference either. And the only difference was organic spaghetti was way more expensive to cook. That's the only difference I noticed. But other than that, it's been a great experience. And I've learned a lot of new things about cooking and all that kind of stuff. So see you next time. Bye-bye. Hmm. Again.